Good morning, lady and gentlemen. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Thank you all for being here this morning. Welcome to the December 5th, 2018 meeting of the Danville Planning and Zoning Commission. As tradition, we'll begin our meeting with prayer. Our God and Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and all the blessings of it, the health you've given us this day and letting us rise another day to enjoy your creation. We pray as we make decisions here this day, they'll be in accordance with your will, for, better, for all those involved and for the betterment of this community. We pray for our servicemen and women who continue to defend our freedoms, that you would watch over and care for them, let those conflicts be resolved, and bring them home to their loved ones as soon as possible. Continue to watch over and care for us, help us continue to build this community to the best of our ability that all live here may enjoy the benefits of it. We thank you for the freedoms we enjoy, the peace that we enjoy, the safety and protection you've given us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Approval next, November 7, 2018. We make a motion, we approve the minutes. Uh, Terry moves, we approve. Um, I'd like to note a couple of... Okay. Um, Need a second. And we will. Somebody give me a second. I'll second. Oh. Susie seconds. Okay. Good discussion. Go ahead, Susie. Uh, a couple of uh, name uh, corrections um, for Shepherdson and Ball Camp. Just the spelling. And I'll okay. get Lisa afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Have a motion for corrections to those minutes. Second. Have a second to approve as corrected. Terry Moses with second. All in favor? Vote unanimous. Thank you. Uh, financial report from October 2018. Comments on that, Stephen? That's in your packet. I'll be glad to answer any questions. we got a budget amendment later in the, on the agenda, which is more about our focus. I will point out um, we did put a difference on the balance sheet page. We did put a little summary at the bottom that shows us our prior balance and our current balance. Just more of a checkbook flow balance. Um, so you got the full financials, and then on the balance sheet at the bottom, the uh, bookkeeping firm put again a beginning cash balance 10-1, basically what we spent, what we paid, what we took in, what we paid, and what we have in the bank. More of just a summary, so you don't have to sort of decide, go through all those numbers. And if you want to, that's just a quicker summary of just the cash flow. And we'll tweak this with the firm as we continue to work with them. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. It makes it, for me, more understandable a little bit from month to month. So if you get home and do some math, though, again, Jerry and I think alike a little bit. If you think about what we had in the bank, what we took in, what we spent, that should be about those numbers don't actually work, add, subtract, equal, because there's some unpaid expenses that get put in that the checks don't get written. So they actually don't add up except they match the bank balance. We don't always, we spend the money, but that sometimes we put money in an expense account that the check hasn't cleared yet. So that's the difference. She wanted to point that out. Thank I'll be glad to answer any other questions on the finance report. Financially, you think we're doing well? Or yeah, I think it's looking good. I mean, if you look at the bank balance, 104, um, and we just looked at the Novembers, they're in the high 90s. Again, part of the meeting change next year is to get you guys looking at current month. Everything's trending really well. And we'll show you that in the amendment here, the budget amendment in a minute. Okay. Make a motion. Sure. Make a motion to approve. Susie so moves, we approve. I second it. And Mary Beth seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve the uh, bu budget report. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote unanimous. Thank you. Uh, construction sureties. Yes. Okay. You, every month we put the current balance in your packet. Those are just standing balance. The only difference is a little bit interest more, a little more interest this past month, about $5. But there is an item related to maple tree. As you know, we did a phase one design to get this drainage fixed in the maple tree place subdivision. Spent $2,500 for initial design. The Vantage Engineering now has completed a complete bid ready packet. That was in your packet too, right behind there. Uh, with the invoice so we owe them another twenty five hundred dollars um, and now we have a construction exhibit ready to bid uh, and get this construction completed timing wasn't very good for the weather we're hoping to get this sooner but we got this and what I'm asking for your authorization is to pay them the twenty five hundred dollars for the phase two design that is coming out of that bond money so again that summary that you have 
Maple Tree would be reduced by another $2,500 if you authorize us to pay Vantage for the second phase. I make a motion that we pay that bill. Vance, we approve that motion or request for the $2,500. I'll second it. And Terry seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote unanimous. Steve, any comment just on what's going on with the Hunt Farm subdivision? Here? Yeah, I went out there last week. Lisa's been out there too. Um, the sidewalks are built as you pull in um, on the left. They come from the street as you go on in. There's two new houses under construction on the right, two footers being poured. There's two homes on construction up the hill on the left. Um, the sidewalks are also built uh, mostly up the left, but there's a gap still um as we go around the corner so i would guess once these two homes are constructed there'll be sidewalks there we'll still have about six sections of sidewalks to build on the left which would complete the agreement that we worked out with the developer so it's kind of on his time frame we're holding the money till he gets them completed but he did build the sidewalks from the left if you go out there all the way out to the intersection of buster going on up um, they're not backfilled. You can see they're raised up out of the dirt a little bit, so there's some final grading that needs to be done, but they look good. They're four foot sidewalks with an apron to the street intersection. So he's built that all the way up the hill. Okay. But he's not finished. And when he gets done, we'll release the money back to the developer. Item L, subdivision approvals, Roy and Angela Martin, subdivision on water, Waterworks Road. <clears throat> Excuse me, 450 Waterworks Road, 56 acres. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through these plats. Uh, and again, Mr. Carroll's here, Nancy's here on their two plats, but this one was done by KWM. Uh, I don't see that they're here. Uh, this is a consolidation plat that you heard on Waterworks. It's taken several tracks and consolidating those into one that puts us at about 56 plus acres. So it's hard to sort of read, but the track, what we call D2, D3, and D4, and then the one that's part of D book 369, page 61, are all being consolidated into one track. And then part of that D book 369, page 61, which is a southern track, there's still a remaining piece that stays on the other farm. So again, it's just a retrace, a consolidation plat for the farm. There's no structures. You can see our notes that went through technical review. They're in red. They've gone back to the, the engineer surveyor. Um, and they have to correct those. We approve this a technical review with those comments. We, there are no utility requirements because there's no structures. There's no barn. We thought the barn was on the property. It's south of the property. And we uh, verified the benchmark. And we just, the only real correction the developer needs to make is we hope to move the purpose statement under the map. It's just housekeeping. But technical review looked at it and uh, approved it to forward to you guys a recommendation to approve. Move, we approve. General moves, we approve. Mary Beth seconds. Question, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Uh, number two, May Lamb subdivision track containing 1.1 acres intersection of Beverly Road, Caldwell Lane. This is, this is an interesting plat. Um, looks pretty straightforward. We're cutting off a 1.012 acre track off the major, off the big farm. And the, the you've got just a section of the plat in 11 by 17. Um, but they're cutting off this one acre of the old farmhouse, and it's pretty straightforward. We cut off one acre in the ag district. The issue, though, is the house doesn't meet the current setbacks, and it goes through an existing utility easement. So there's a note that the developer's going or the surveyor's going to have to put on the plat, which says that even though the lot's a legal one acre lot, it's going to currently have a non-conforming structure on it. I think you guys got the plat to make sure we all got the right one here. <coughs> yep, the land plat, yep. So you can see the house there is existing, and we're cutting it off the big farm. Again, there's still going to be 56 plus acres on the farm, but because the house doesn't meet the setbacks, our setback's 50 foot when you cut off one acre, it's nowhere near that. We have to put a non conforming note for the structure. Do you have the big one? It's kind of hard to see what's he's, around. He's got them right here, but. Okay. This is the corrected one he's going to get signed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. 
As you guys know, um, Steve just didn't bring us in 11 by 17. He brought in full size, so we just had to make a copy of that bigger plat. Again, it's pretty straightforward cutting off a one acre, but when a house doesn't meet the setbacks, we have to put that non-conforming note. And you can see the utility easement catches that front porch just slightly. So they'll, the revised one in your hand actually has a new note at the top corner that he's constructed, a new note at the bottom of the revised one in your hand that now says that's a non-conforming structure. Note number nine on the one he just handed out to you. And so what is the effect of that? It means they can't expand it until they bring it into compliance. Won't be an issue if you just live in the house, but if someday they want to expand, they're, they're non-conforming because they don't meet the setbacks. But there's a chance we're going to revise setbacks with the zoning ordinance rewrite. It might come into compliance then. Or if they tore the house down and needed to build a new house, they'd have to set it back at least 50 foot. They sold the house. It, the note goes with it. It's... And how far is it set back right now? Oh, it's roughly geez. just a ballpark. Twenty, maybe. Okay. Which is what you see on old farmhouses or old tenant houses on big farms. They were close to the road, and they don't meet our. I mean, our fifty-foot setback is um, that's a lot on the one-acre track. But it fronts Coel. Mm -hmm. But they're just cutting it off to sell the the lot. Um, it's a legal ag lot at one acre. It just now contains a non-conforming structure. Appreciate Steve's note on there. And that was one of the things technical review looked at, focused on. And uh, I move we approve. Terry, motion we approve. I'll second. So is second. Question, discussion on the motion to approve. Terry, none. All in favor? It's unanimous. Number three, Dale Keith Ellis, uh, subdivision track. 20 acres, 2991 Webster Road. He's going to gather those originals back up because he's going to get those signed there that he just handed out to you guys. Oh, you I had it? I, I can't put it up oh, here. No. Okay. How many did you have? There's three there. Oh, okay. here. Four. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Uh, this plat is Nancy's plat. And again, on Webster, uh, you can see we're cutting off a 20 acre track off the original farm and again the remaining piece will be 44 plus or minus acres um, again technical for you looked at it not much on this one we needed to re to review or revise um, Nancy anything you want to add it's a 20 acre farm it's going to be conveyed yes where's the house there is a mobile home on it and it sits back down So this isn't where Mr. Ellis's house is? No, no. Oh. This is where his grandson lives. And, and as you guys can see, all the surveyors are doing the plats a little different. We're working towards more uniform plat submittals, but at this point, these are fine, in our opinion. Um, putting the structures on are helpful um, to look at those setbacks, but we did know there was, there was a home on there, and we verified it met that 75-foot. This one has a 75-foot front setback and is in compliance, although the structure's not shown on the plat. The big one have a location block? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I asked if you had a location yes, block. Sir, it, it doesn't show. Yeah, it's this one right here. Our, it's our doesn't have it. Yeah, we, we took a, yeah, what, what we're doing is, again, we're asking the surveyors to turn in two 24 by 36s and two 11 by 17s. And, and some are getting us that, and some don't have the ability. So we had to, all we can do is make a copy of 11 by 17 on ours. Um, and we really don't want them to make a dozen copies of this, and then we just toss them all. So we're giving you guys the best copy we can get you. And, but we've got the originals here if you need to see them. That's and it, had, it, has, it met everything we needed on the flat, as you can see, it had everything on it. Sure. I know like, I don't have the capability to do 11 to 17. But before, I can look at that one. Before we always did, everybody had a full size copy. Would you like to have a full size copy? I don't mind making it. I mean, I, you know. I think we need one or two or something just to keep 
Yeah. That's real. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I got five right here. Oh, okay. And so, but we just put those in your packet. We want you to see them before the meeting, but we're holding the originals because we have to record them. Technical review, you guys saw the big ones. Um, but we don't want to have the surveyor turn in 12 initially, and then we go to technical review and we have to correct them, and all those go in the trash, and then they have to give us another 12 or whatever. So, but we can get you guys big ones, at least have one you can pass around. Sure. It's, just, it's just, one it's just sometimes it's easier I understand. To, to see the whole yeah. area. Yeah. And again, I, that, that'd be our request down the road. So we can get one of each. You guys can always see a complete plat, at least in a smaller size, and we'll bring you the big ones. Again, we have these right here. So. So as you move, we approve. Vince seconds. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chance to even put it up here. He's been trying He's to say He's been trying all day. <laughs> yeah. Question on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote you then. Thank you. Uh, item G, public hearings. What's that? We, no, we just play, we had no site plans, no zone change, just a oh, placeholder, no public like hearings. Yep. Uh, new business advisory committee report we they had not met. Had we not had met. To Although I'll just mention, I'd like for an advisory committee meeting to happen sometime between now and our January meeting. Okay. The zoning ordinance is ready to roll out. Uh, I've decided to break it into pieces. I think it'll be easier than to look at the whole thing. Um, so the advisory committee, if they can think about a time between now and the end of January that we could get together. I'd like to walk you through those at least first three articles that we're ready to bring to the Planning Commission. Okay. Right. We'll do that. And that would be Jerry, Susie, and Jeffrey, I believe, yeah. are on the advisory. Yeah. We'll, we'll send you guys out something, see what works for your schedule after the first year, maybe. Okay. Uh, under new business, also uh, executive session. We have some issues we need to discuss in executive session, so uh, we need a motion to go into executive session pursuant to KRS 61810 to discuss some pr proposed pending legislation that's been uh, sent to us, and secondly, to discuss some personnel issues under 61.810 also. So a motion to go into executive session to discuss those two issues, please. And I'll just, you said legislation, that's litigation. Litigation is yeah. what I intended to say. <laughs> you said it. And that's all at your all's table. Yeah, we need a motion and a second to go into closed session. And Susie moves. I second. Vince seconds. <laughs> and motion to go into executive session to discuss those two issues. Terry moves to go back to the regular session. Vent seconds. Question discussion on a motion to go back to regular session. Hearing none, all in favor? We're back in regular session. We have before us, uh, Steve has presented to the advisory committee, personnel committee, uh, some job changes and or updates and uh, is recommending a 5% raise for Lisa with regard to her, her new position and with regard to the duties that she has now taken on with regard to uh, having a person leave the planning and zoning uh, office. So uh, if there's any discussion on that, please share it. And if not, we would, uh, Chair would entertain a motion to, uh, to approve the personnel committee's report and uh, suggestions. I make a motion to approve the personnel actions. Effective January 1st, 2019. Okay, Susie moves, we approve. We'll second. And Terry seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. And this would include some <coughs> job description changes and some uh, <coughs> increase in salary for Lisa. And her title would now become administrative assistant too. You okay with that, Lisa? I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Question, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? <coughs> Vote unanimous. Uh, personnel committee, you just heard it. Budget committee report? No budget committee report. Steve will talk about some yeah. committee. Yeah, we, we're uh, no formal budget committee report, but if this is the point where we want to talk about a budget amendment.
decided to do a budget amendment at this time of the year for a couple reasons. Make it real simple. It should be the item that looks like this in color document, yellow. Jerry, you got one? Yeah. I'm just there it is. All righty. Um, budget committee looked at this. And what we're doing is some housekeeping because we now have McDaniel's Wealth uh, Accounting Services. We need to create a line item for them. So on the left, you see anything in red kind of fixes some QuickBook account things. We're going to delete a couple things. We need to add a couple columns. Um, and then everything on the right in yellow is changing from the budget we've already adopted. So you can see everything in yellow changes. The big one is at the top, our carryover has to be adjusted based on the audit. And then we're reallocating lots of personnel things because of now going to a two-person office. Some housekeeping on supplies, um, legal stuff. Now that we've kind of worked out this uh, new legal contract, putting some money into the legal columns. And then you can see we're creating a column in line 56 on page two for accounting services. And as you can see, line 73, this extra reserve account that we kind of just keep right now for legal and construction, you can see is growing quite a bit. The other thing, line 67, is the match we're going to put in for the Smart Growth Conference. It's anticipated we would not spend that this fiscal year, um, but it's now in the budget, sitting there when we get ready. So I, I think the big picture is interesting. If you look at line 70 and compare it with line 21, go back and look at line 21. That's our revenues before carryover, which is line 21. And look at line 70, which is now our expenses. We're getting closer to what I'll call a balanced budget without carryover. So if you take that smart growth conference off the table, uh, some of this extra stuff we're doing this year, you can see we're starting to get right in line with if, if we had no carryover, our revenues and our expenditures are more in line. Uh, that's the good news of going to a two-person office. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of savings. If you go and look at, again, look at column 20, 36. Look at the total personnel savings there on column 36 from what we budgeted the 160 to 129 and that includes $8,000 that we've already paid uh, that position that sort of terminated. Uh, it was just partial year. There's another $8,000 savings that won't be there next year. But the offset is, is small, but it's the accounting services, right? The accounting services, but yeah, it's, it's pretty it's small. small. You know, yeah, well, that, you know. that 8000 was this year. Had we done the whole year of a full-time position, oh, it's still a state win. retirement, yeah. Uh, yeah, it saves almost $35,000. So, but, again, this is just snapshot December 2018. We'll probably adjust it. We didn't mess with revenues. By the way, our revenues are trending high right now. We just sort of stayed with the expenditure side as a housekeeping exercise. We, got, we really need to get these left-hand columns fixed to get them in our QuickBooks account so then the accounting firm can start tracking things the way we want them to track them. Again, this is a formal budget amendment uh, at this point, and we'll probably do another one after the second quarter, maybe the third quarter, as we trend things. Glad to answer any questions about that that you guys might have. It's pretty impressive. Uh, person, the Budget Committee works hard on this stuff. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, we get together on a regular basis, and when it's time to start planning next year's budget, by the way, the year to date uh, is there. We've already got a projected column on another document. We've already looked at the entire year, and we've pretty much got 90% of the next year's budget sort of already penciled in at this point as we get it ready. So, do you need a motion? To yeah, yes. we would formally have to amend the budget. I make a motion to accept the adjustments as presented. Mayor Beth moves we approve. I'll second. Susie seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote unanimous. Any other new business? Yep, two things. Uh, the new meeting schedule was in your packet. So again, just to remind you guys, we're going to the fourth Wednesday starting in January, and the whole goal will be then you'll see the financial stuff a lot sooner. You'll get to see December's financials in January as opposed to looking at November's. So we'll be going to the fourth Wednesday, technical review shifts. Everything kind of is on that meeting schedule is in your packet. I uh, just want to point that out for you guys. Uh, paper's going to have to fix their digital calendar, I guess, because we're now going to be on the fourth Wednesdays. But So we got a gap between now and that meeting. Again, I'd like to have the advisory committee meet sometime here. We're going to get the zoning ordinance rolled out, hopefully, start of next year. The other item I want to talk about is parking. Steve, oh, go do ahead. we have any of them? 
public notice or advertisement about the meeting change? Uh, I don't know if it was in the last article. It's definitely it's already on our website. Okay. Developers are already pulling down the schedule. Surveyors, engineers have this already. Everyone has the filing deadlines. Um, we've been talking with folks that potentially, if they had a case that needed to get before you guys before January 23rd, we told them we'd entertain a special meeting request. But at this point, everyone was fine with the next filing deadline of January 2nd. Do we normally run an ad before the meeting? Uh, we do run an ad before the meeting. For if there's a site plan or zone change hearing, we mm -hmm. put an ad in the paper. We don't do that for plots. Also, I'm just wondering if we did a physical posting outside the office every yeah, window. Yeah, we can do that. Just to, and notice as the new meeting schedule. Did you know, say? Just a statement that the meetings will now be the fourth Wednesday. Fourth Wednesday. Did you say it's on the website? It's on the website. It's on the schedules are on the website already. Yeah, and we're sending it out to folks. Uh, the other item, if you guys are okay with that, was just in your pack. The other item deals with parking. Let me see what I did with that. There's a letter from the city at your desk. The city is going to issue you guys parking passes, including Bruce down there. Um, it's become, uh, it's come up for the Board of Adjustments and maybe some other meetings. It, there tends to be long meetings sometimes. We have bigger hearings and folks are getting parking tickets or whatnot. Uh, the city manager has suggested the Board of Adjustments and Planning Commission ought to be able to get an official parking pass. He uh, directed the parking department and worked with them on getting you guys passes. These are individual to yourself. Um, so you have to sign this sheet here and you'll get your pass with your number. You hang that in your car when you come in here for a planning commission meeting and you park out there and you won't have to worry about getting a ticket if the meeting runs two and a half hours, three hours. Um, you can't use these off times. They know when you guys meet. <laughs> they also have our meeting schedule and they've, and that letter says that. I think that you guys aren't to use these around town on a Wednesday so you can drink coffee at the hub or whatnot or um, but these are for you guys and after the meeting we'll get you to sign yours and give you your pass and there's one for Bruce too but please note one of the things they did put in there is that parking out here is what they're really trying to eliminate and it happens at city commission meetings too this is a uh, after hours it's okay but during business hours this is you know water customers come in here and what they don't really want is want people parking out here in this 15 minute parking um, or back in the staff parking, but they're giving you guys these with the hope that you park somewhere out here. Four places out front. <laughs> I, I think this is a start, but um, I do think there's the potential you still could get a ticket out here if you park longer than 15. I don't know if anyone's ever had that happen, but uh, they, they've issued this for you guys in the Board of Adjustments and our attorney uh, for official meetings of, the, of this board. So I think it was a good gesture, and you guys have these. You hang. You can. Switch, switch them to whatever car you have. If you don't have your placard in here and you show up and park and we have a long meeting, there's still a chance you get a ticket. So throw these in your favorite car or glove box and bring them down here. So we're not to park any place on the property? The letter, I, Bridget wrote the letter there. You can read it. It says the 15 minute is really not to be I for. That, but the back is back. for employees. They say that too. Uh, that's staff only parking. Right at this okay. point, it's pretty full back there now since 911's come into the building. We we have challenges some days too, um, but I think the problem. Yeah, I, th I think the problem. And, and again, when city commission meets, it's after hours, so that those are different. Um, and uh, and other folks park there after hours too for restaurants and that. But if people park here and go next door and shop, I think they issue tickets out here. <coughs> You guys are welcome to contact Bridget if you have any questions on any of the parking related. I was just asked to give you the passes and get you the sign for them. Okay. And that's all I have unless you guys have anything else. Yeah. Any update on the Junction City status? Yes, let's yeah. do that. Um, I've met with Junction City uh, several times. They did vote formally to start the process to come back into the Planning Commission. However, uh, talked with the mayor briefly and I think what we're going to do is wait till after the first of the year to kind of re uh, get that moving forward there's several new council members coming on in Junction City and I think we want to go back to them just make sure they're all still of, of the same opinion the formal process is they have to write a letter to the other governments and ask to come back in and then we have to get the new interlocal agreement drafted put on the table and all the governments have to ratify that uh, interlocal agreement We've got a new county judge coming in. So, again, we're going to have a lot of new players in this process. So the ideas will wait to the first of the year. 
get Junction to write the letters, make sure the new county judge uh, understands what role the county has to play in that. But the other, the city of Perryville, Danville, and technically Boyle County have to allow them to come back in. And I don't anticipate any problems <clears throat> there. The mayor wants to come back. The prior council has voted to do that, um, as well as suspend their zoning permits. They've done that too. Um, but I think just to be, you know, a courtesy to the new incoming council members, we want to go back and talk to them about that after their sure. first year. So. Does that have any relationship to the building project that's just uh, south of Walmart there? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, has there been any more uh, activity? We, we hadn't heard anything from them, I okay. don't think. I just was wondering because it seemed pretty uh, impending. Uh, yeah. There was threats against you. Yeah. No, at this point, we haven't heard anything. Okay. Um, just checking. I, mean, um, I, I didn't see it any in the minutes. So I, I was but exciting stuff laying in my desk in there. We've been working with a small map committee to get a new future land use map because we're going to eventually Junction is going to have to get a future land use map, ratify the comprehensive plan, readopt a new zoning ordinance, have a new zoning map. There's a lot of stuff to get them back in as well as get them on the board here. We have a brand new future land use map that they've helped me put together uh, that's sitting in there that says draft and they haven't even seen the final printed version yet. They just came back from Bluegrass Ad. It's impressive. Um, they've planned their whole community out there by the airport. They have done some impressive things on that map, this committee of council members of where they want to see their future go in Junction City. They've labeled several parts of their community high density that don't exist in this town that didn't get put in the Perryville map. There's, there's targeted apartment areas they want to see in Junction City to take advantage of their road network and sewer network that they have down there. So it's an impressive uh, future land use map that, that's going to be unique to their town. So they're serious about coming back on. Good. And uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait to the first year to get that rolling. Any other questions or discussion on any items at all? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Jim, Jim moves to adjourn 10 seconds. <laughs> All in favor, thank you. We're adjourned. All right, let's get your passes here.